Um, during the late 50s and the 60s, um, the Edo Corporation received a number of government contracts to look at improving the performance of aircraft off, off the water. One of the contacts we had was to change the um, bottom on a widget to see if we could get better performance. And I think we put three or four different bottoms on it and performed very well. The other thing we looked at was to, was to investigate what would give the best takeoff performance, a ski versus a hydrofoil, and would it give us some extra capability in possibly rough water. And the video that we're actually wa watching is of a Grumman goose on a hydrofoil and it's kind of interesting to watch that and to see um, we eventually um, and we eventually uh, did get improved performance, but we actually got the best performance. We got better performance out of the ski than we did the hydrofoil. Um, one of the other things we wanted to see if we could develop a, a product that would land on all surfaces. And again, the ski was the best there, and we used we took that same goose and we flew it off of snow on a ski. And we flew it off the wheels, and then we flew it off the water on a ski. And that's the basis of that program. Uh, whenever we flew that program, since it was a government development contract, we had to shoot, uh, had to shoot movie film. And if you'll note, there's six, there was 10,000 feet of 16-millimeter color film taken of that, and most of that flight tech test work was done right in the LaGuardia control zone. I'm not sure if that video shows it, but in a lot of them you'll see Connie's landing right overhead of the goose. Jay, where did this program go, and why was this testing, why was this hydrofoil put on this aircraft? Okay, when the, air, when the airplane was originally, or the concept was basically put together, uh, the, the, the Navy was interested in developing an airplane that could possibly operate off of all surfaces. So one of the things was we had to develop a lift body that would operate off of both uh, snow, uh, land, and water. And we flew it with a ski, and I'm not sure there's a ski picture in there, but I do have uh, individual black and white prints of the ski. We flew it off the hydrofoil, and we flew it off of wheels with the, uh, the wheels that was in that Grumman Goose. Um, the program was quite successful as far as concept, and you, and you realize also at the same time Conveyor was fooling around with the jet fighter, and the jet fighter also utilized the ski as a lift by to get that airplane in the air. The, air, the program came to, the, came to an end in probably the late 60s or the early 70s, and the reason was it was a whole different, different move in the military away from seaplanes. At that time, the helicopter came in, and the jet came in, and the carrier became more popular, and the contract was basically canceled uh, uh, by the Navy since we no longer um, had a requirement to have an aircraft that had to operate off of all surfaces with the development of the jet and the helicopter. Now, when this program was completed, when you were doing the testing, was there any type of FCC or, uh, FAA rules you had to go through for this testing? No, this was purely a government contract. We had some military specs as far as loads and sea states, and the idea was to see how rough a sea state we could do it. But there was no... There was no um, uh, FAA control or audit of the thing. In fact, the FAA, we invited them to come over and see it one day, and they didn't even show a great amount of interest in it. So basically, this was purely a Navy contract. It was very similar to what the DC-3 was. It was built to a military spec to meet certain design goals, and we had to have no, uh, had to meet no FAA requirements, but one of the requirements of the military was that the airplane still had to keep its flight characteristics. What happened to the airplane? Uh, when the airplane... It's hard to tell where all those airplanes is. The, uh, we had a, I mentioned to you once before, we had a Grumman widget, and we were trying to improve the water handling characteristics on that. And when that program was done, and also on the Grumman Goose, they were both returned back to uh, Patuxent Naval Air Station. And from there, they kind of went into the surplus market. The widget went into the market, and it, was, it ended up, in, I actually saw it in Trader Plane one day. And somehow Edo's name was involved, and everybody called me up and said they could find a widget that was very cheap. But on the widget we did, all we did was cut the bottom off of the water line, and we really didn't leave the hydraulics in or the wheels, and we uh, had different bottoms on it. So there's no way everybody gets hurt. The goose, I have no idea what happened to it. I suspect, I suspect it eventually was scrapped completely, because we've never seen any additional pictures or any talk of the thing or anything else. 
Jay Fry, thank you very much for sharing a part of your history. Great. I'm glad to be of help, and I'll see if I can dig up some other interesting subjects.